William Fisk Bill Hera. If you're at all acquainted with the city of Reno or would like to be, you should know the uh, highlights or the essentials of the life of this man, who as an individual probably had more influence on the development of modern gaming than any other person in the state of Nevada, or the country for that matter. If there was a grouping of people uh, gathered together that uh, had the most impact on the city of Reno, Bill Hera would definitely have a seat at that table. Reno suffered a huge and irreparable loss in 2020 with the closure and subsequent sale of Harris Reno, located right here in downtown. Reno had had some form of Harris for 83 years. While the pandemic didn't help, uh, ultimately changing economic conditions and customer tastes led the owner Caesars Entertainment to shutter the legendary hotel and gaming establishment. The new owner is converting the property, which is located on two city blocks, into a residential and retail model uh, called Reno City Center. Allow me to walk you through the life of Bill Hera, who founded what would ultimately become the largest gaming empire in the world, starting in 1937. William Fisk, or Bill Hera, was born in 1911 in Pasadena, California, into a relatively affluent family. His father, John, was an attorney. While he was still young, the family relocated to Venice, California, where John joined a law firm. Incidentally, my own grandfather, Howard Ellison, was born in 1912 and relocated as a child to Venice, and my grandmother, Theo, was born in Santa Monica in 1914. I bring this up because it's very possible that they might have been Bill Harris' classmates at Venice High School, which is still there. The family photo albums that have come down through my family contain a number of images of old Venice, and these scenes are contemporary with what Bill Hera would have seen as a young man. While not an exemplary student, Bill had a comfortable life as a young man, but unfortunately, his life was about to change. In the late 1920s, his mother fell into a deep depression, and this was in an era when the health industry didn't have a good handle on such things. Tragically, she committed suicide, and this devastated Bill, and his personality changed going forward. Previously, he was outgoing and fun-loving, and after this, he became much more reserved and soft-spoken, which he would remain for the rest of his life. Uh, some people would consider him aloof and standoffish, but those in his inner circle would report back that uh, in private, he would open up. Then came the stock market crash of 1929, which ushered in the Great Depression. His father's real estate holdings were wiped out, so his dad, John Hara, concentrated his efforts on his last remaining business, a quasi-legal game of chance on the Venice Pier called the Circle Game. Bill dropped out of college to help with the business, which he eventually purchased from his father. There was always the looming possibility of being shut down, depending on who was chief of police at any given time, and payoffs to the authorities almost certainly happened. After growing weary of dealing with the authorities, in 1937 he decided to relocate his business to Reno, Nevada, where gambling had been made legal in 1931, and he was familiar with the area after making several pleasure trips to Reno. He opened his first business in October of 1937, a small bingo parlor, but he closed that up after two weeks. He tried again with another bingo place on Old Commercial Row, another on Center Street, and finally he landed on Virginia Street. Back in the early days of Reno gambling, the main action was on Center Street with the Bank Club and the Palace Club. And it was uh, early businesses like Harold's Club and Harris that moved that rad happening scene onto Virginia Street. Bill was only modestly successful in these early ventures, and the uh, following 10 years produced nothing really remarkable business-wise. In 1946, something clicked, and he started making bold business moves and taking risks. And this was a pattern that ultimately catapulted him into becoming the largest operator in the state of Nevada. In 1946, Bill Hera went heavily into debt and opened his first full-fledged casino 
right here at this location on Virginia Street. He called it Harris Reno Club. And in a short amount of time, he became very profitable and very successful, and he was on his way. There were a couple of traits that Bill Hara had that separated him from his competition. Firstly, in a young industry that was rife with cheating, skimming, and employee theft, he insisted on running an honest operation, a pattern started by Harold's Club, his much larger competitor to the north. Also in contrast to Harold's Club, Bill had high standards, business sense, and was highly organized. Harold's Club was founded and operated by the Smith family, formerly carnival game operators that pretty much ran their business by the seat of the pants and whatever sounded good at the time. Bill Hara had set rules, strict policies, and had a written manual for every procedure in his casino. Surprisingly, he had little interest in the day-to-day -day operations of his business. He had a knack for hiring highly competent people to run the business, and he had a hands-off management style. He just let these smart people do their job, and he had them keep him informed. This freed up his time for pursuing the real love of his life, classic automobiles. All right, this is what it looks like to video in the rain. Me holding some papers over my capture device here. In 1955, Bill went even farther into debt and bought a club here at the south shore of Lake Tahoe with the intent of operating it year round. Uh, all the other clubs up at Lake Tahoe uh, would close after Labor Day for the winter and old timers uh, thought his plan was kooky talk. Uh, it would never work. But of course it did, and uh, Harris Tahoe is still in business to this day. Bill's angle was to install a uh, bus service to shuttle customers in, mainly from California, all year long, and this was beyond successful and copied in short order. Uh, he continued his hands-off management style here at Harris Tahoe, and he was very particular about the maintenance of his facility and the decorum of his staff. He even had a pet peeve about light bulbs. Every light was on, and if he saw a burned out bulb, he would get somebody on it to change it out in short order. A lot of people don't know that Bill Hara was very much behind environmental causes, and he knew building a big club at, at the lake would uh, uh, certainly make an impact. He originally wanted this tower to be about twice as tall, but he had it shortened. And uh, as you notice, he put it into earth tones, so it would you know, not be a glaring, garish object, but something that would kind of blend in with the environment. As I mentioned earlier, Bill Harris' consuming passion was the purchase and the restoration of classic automobiles. He bought his first one in 1947, a Maxwell, and in the last 20 years of his life, he actually spent more time with his cars than he did on his business. He opened the Harris Auto Collection to the public in 1962, and by 1970, it had registered its one millionth visitor. This is the building in Sparks, Nevada, where I actually saw the Harris Auto Collection for the first time when I moved here in 1986. The whole collection required several facilities, and at its peak, Bill Hara, one man, owned 1,400 classic automobiles. 1,400 classic cars. It's a crazy number. And I know it sounds just like a number, but let me illustrate. This represents one of the Hera cars. This is 10 cars. This is 100 cars. This is 300. This is 500. This is 700 classic cars. And we're only halfway there. This is 1,000. This is 1,400 priceless and irreplaceable automobiles. At the time of his death, the collection was valued at $40 million. In today's dollars, are you ready? $187 million. Towards the end of his life, Bill planned a project he would have called Harris Auto World which uh, would have been a custom-built complex to show off his auto collection. It would have had gambling, uh, retail, and entertainment. It would have been qu quite, a, quite an experience. Uh, it would have been located right out here on I-80 west of Reno, and the company actually had acreage pur purchased for that purpose. But sadly, it was not meant to be. 
Oh man, if he had kept that collection together and it was displayed that way, this would have been an international destination to this day. Hey, if you're liking this content, guys, uh, please click the little like button and please subscribe. It just lets you know when new content comes out uh, when I create it. In later years, he also kept a fleet of aircraft, including jets capable of transoceanic flight, which would take him on frequent vacations and to car events around the world. As a rich guy, he had a fairly extravagant lifestyle and veritable rivers of money from Harrah's Reno and Tahoe funded all of this. Bill Harrow was spending so much money by the early 1970s that Harrah's hotels, casinos, started to develop cash flow issues and they needed more capital for expansions. So Bill Hara decided to go public and Harris was listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1973. And this marked the first time a company that generated the majority of its revenue from gambling was listed on the exchange. I think it's illustrative to note Bill's approach to this highly successful business around this time. Lloyd Dyer was the president of Harris from 1975 to 1980. As he recounted in his oral history, on his first day on the job, Bill Hara took him to lunch and said, I want you to understand this. The bottom line to most corporations is the most important thing. I still own 70% of the company and the bottom line really isn't that important to me. I do want shareholders to appreciate and join in our profits, but the three things I want done are, I want the customer treated properly, I want the employees treated properly. If we do that, we won't have to worry about unions. And I want the place clean and maintained at all times. If we make money after that, fine. That's my philosophy. You know, that's pretty remarkable in its simplicity. What he was saying is if you do these simple, straightforward things, you will make money. During his lifetime, Bill was married to six different women and one of them twice, Sherry. And with Sherry Hara, he adopted two boys, John and Tony. His primary residence was located on this property here in South Reno, and it was, and still is called, Ranch Hara. The original residence was torn down long ago, and today the property is home to a large-scale uh, residential and retail development. He also kept a residence at Lake Tahoe called Via Hara, and he would entertain and house entertainers that played Harris Tahoe there. He also loved the area in Idaho around the towns of Haley and Ketchum and Sun Valley. Uh, he even owned a lodge up there called the Middle Fork Lodge. And at one time he even purchased the town of Stanley, Idaho to service his lodge. Bill Harrow was also legendary in the treatment of the entertainers that he hired to play in Reno and Tahoe. He went over the top to make sure all their needs were met. He provided homes for them to stay in and cars to drive and even took care of their entourages. Many entertainers really appreciated this uh, grade A, class A, one treatment and asked, actually asked to play here at Harris Tahoe and many of them became friends of Bill in later years. That includes Sammy Davis Jr., Jim Neighbors, Bill Cosby, John Denver, and several others. One of Bill's great entertainment coups was the pairing of Frank Sinatra and John Denver here at back-to-back -back performances at Harris Tahoe. In 1978, it was discovered that Bill had an aneurysm on his aorta, and he traveled to the Mayo Clinic for a risky operation. In June of 1978, Bill Hara passed away from post-operative complications. His funeral was held here at St. John's Presbyterian on Plum Lane here in Reno. John Denver sang here at the service. I was able to track down an original program from his service. Uh, I guess you call it a program. It, wa it wasn't a baseball game, the leaflet that they handed out to the guests. Bill Hara had 76 honorary pallbearers. I'm sure you'll recognize some of these names. John Esquaga, Glenn Campbell, Bill Cosby, Sammy Davis Jr., Baron Hilton, Merle Haggard, Jim Neighbors, Bob Newhart, Wayne Newton, Don Rickles, Frank Sinatra, 
Red Skelton, Jerry Weintraub, Lawrence Welk. A colorful era passed into history when the Smith family sold Harold's Club to Howard Hughes in 1970. And the deal was sealed with the passing of Bill Hera. The era of families and individuals owning gambling houses had come to an end. Curiously, other than a routine will, Bill didn't leave solid plans for the disposition of his auto collection, for his real estate holdings, or his casinos. His attorney was named Mead Dixon, and he was named the executor, and he set about to deal with this massive estate. Harris, Reno, and Tahoe, and the entire automobile collection were sold off to the Holiday Inns Corporation, a corporation that had lots of experience in hotels, but no experience in gaming. The two hotel casinos simply became cogs in the big corporate wheel, although, although they were profitable and made money. Horrifically, most of the 1,400 classic automobiles got auctioned off by Holiday Inns, who saw more value in the dollars to help offset the expense of purchasing Harris than to keep the collection together. There were several car collectors that were posthumously pissed at Bill, and I get it. It's like, dude, how could you not have a plan together in place to keep this collection, this wonderful collection together for everyone, for Reno? Um, before he passed away, Bill did confide to his wife, Verna, that he considered the collection his thing and he did not want to stipulate uh, what a future owner could or could not do with their own assets. Fortunately, a foundation was established. The Holiday Inns did kick back some cars and today about 250 classic vehicles are preserved uh, in the William F. Hara National Automobile Museum in downtown Reno. This is a top rated thing to see and do in Reno, so next time you're around, come in and take a look and uh, remember that there were five times this many vehicles in this vast collection and two hugely influential gaming establishments, which all of which were the efforts of 40 years of effort of one guy, the sole proprietor, Bill Hera. This is the final resting place of William Fisk, Bill Hera, Reno gaming pioneer and founder of Hera Hotels Casinos. Haley, Idaho. He loved the Haley, Idaho area. He loved the outdoors here. This is where he, he uh, chose to be laid to rest. Bill, any chance of being buried in Reno? Too late for that. All right, we're gonna wrap this one up today at a little spot in Reno that you might not know about. We're at Moe's by the River, which is located on Winter Street and Jones, right at the intersection. My former neighbor, I actually used to live right across the street. My former neighbor uh, converted her uh, little front area into a uh, little beer garden, wine garden, what it, depending on what you have. And uh, she got her all her permits and such. And this is a great place to hang out, grab a beer, grab a wine, grab a cocktail, and uh, watch life go by here uh, in the Poundings edition near downtown Reno. I came by today before Moe's open, so it'll be a little more quiet. So if you happen to mosey down here, please tell Maureen that Steve sent you. So here's a final parting thought. Today we live in corporate America. Welcome to Corporate Air America and enjoy your stay. Uh, as of this filming, there are about 18 properties across the United States that operate under the Harrah's name uh, and owned by Caesars Entertainment. My fear is that one day Caesars could just roll out of bed and say, you know what, let's just change all the names to Caesars World or El Dorado Land or, or what have you. No one knows who Hera was anymore. And uh, that, that could very well be the case down the road is, uh, you know, people that know the name of Hera and Hera's uh, pass away to the winds of time. I guess that's kind of why I do this channel. Maybe in my small microscopic way, I can, I can uh, help to preserve that, that, uh, that name of, of Bill Hera and, uh, and hopefully it'll stick around for generations to come. Well, that is all I have for you today. So in the, uh, the words of Harold S. Smith, Sr. of Harold's Club, I'm with you. Cheers.